you mean? You, okay, I'm sorry. What you do you mean admitting your sins into the New Testament? Meaning the only way you can get into the new is if he remits your sins from the old. That's the whole point of Hebrews 9 and 15 saying he is the mediator of the New Testament. So he done mediated for us already. He done mediated. Once you're born again, you're born into. you're not born into the old. You're not born again to be in the Old Testament. You're born again to be in the New Testament. Well, that's not what Matthew 26 and 25 says, though. Matthew 26 and 25 says that his blood is the blood of the new covenant. Yes. So through his blood, we are able to get into the new covenant. However, as we just read in Hosea 2, that hasn't taken place yet. No, so that's, it, that's what you're saying. But when you read Hebrews 9, when you read Hebrews 9, when I said mediate, mediate is in Hebrews 9. Mediate is not in Matthew 26, but you brought Hebrews 9. So when it says he's the mediator, if he's your mediator and he mediates for you and you're allowed to be born again, that's of the New Testament. That's not of the old. So let's right. say if I endure to the, I don't, I don't like to use me. Let's say if you endure to the end and you die, in this lifetime, I don't want to say you either. I'm gonna just make a random because I don't want to wish. No, I, that. I'm not gonna take it any. I already. I, already no, I, just, I don't know. I it ain't about you taking it away. I just don't. I don't want to make myself right, and I don't want to wish no no harm on nobody else. I'm gonna just make up a person. Let's say if a person today, Christ mediates for them mm -hmm. into the New Testament, and they die, they endure to the end. When Christ returns, they're already in. They don't. They're not gonna be. They're not going to have to go through a whole nother mediation. They're already in the New Testament. They they died under that mediation. They died in the New Testament. So are you saying that prior to Christ dying, that he was not our mediator? No. And before Christ came? No. When, before he died. Like, let me just preface it. Okay. When did the New Covenant start? The New Covenant started, I would say, once I would say once Christ died. Right. Christ. So are you saying prior to him dying that he wasn't our mediator? That's a tough question. That's a that's a that's a weird question that you're asking me, because when Christ came on the scene, that's all he preached was that he was the mediator. Right now, before that, it would just be prophesied that he would come. So the Old Testament is about him coming to mediate mm -hmm. uh, for us, like Isaiah, the 53rd chapter. I think um, Hosea, the first chapter. So we hear about Christ coming. So if you want to say he was mediating for us in the spirit, then I would agree. He was mediating for us in the spirit. But until his blood. So like if I read a verse when it says um, uh, in verse 11 in Hebrews 9, but Christ being coming a high priest of good things to come by greater, more perfect tabernacle, not made with blood of his hands. Um, I'm just skipping a couple of verses. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once to the holy place. That blood is not for the old. That blood is only for the new. So if his blood is for the new, why would I want to be in the old? Well, it's not. A, yeah. I'm, are you done? I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, I'm done. I'm done. It's, it's not about wanting to be in the old or wanting to be in the new. It's just going back to again. And I want to address what you said like head on. It's not again. It's not about wanting to. It's like, what does the Bible say? So it says that if the new covenant is synonymous with the marriage, and you agreed already the marriage is not has not taken place yet. You're saying that it's synonymous. The Bible don't say that it's synonymous. You you said it's synonymous, brother. I, I didn't have a problem with saying that the marriage, like when Christ returns, mm -hmm. that completes it. But we're still, even if I go into Hebrews, the 10th chapter in the same chapter. I, so I just want to record the Bible doesn't say that it's synonymous. Well, That's can what I, you're saying can I and I slightly agree with you. OK, so, so let's let's see if it is Hosea 2 and 14 again. Therefore, behold, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and mm -hmm. speak comfortably to her. This is the heavenly father with the nation of Israel, right? Yes. OK. And then it says uh, in verse 16, and it shall be at that day, says the Lord, that thou shalt call me Ishi. What does that mean that we're going to call him Ishi? I think I don't know what Ishi means. I'm going to say maybe father. It's, it's Ayash, I think, is the is the. Uh, uh, OK, no problem. I can you can double check because I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's Ayash. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, like my man. That's what it means. Right. right? Okay, mm -hmm. so what does that mean if we call the Heavenly Father our man as a nation? It means like right now when I call a Heavenly Father my father, I don't like to use the word. We live in such a poor society. But if I were to say the Lord is my man, I can say that right now. But I could not say that without Christ's blood bringing me into the New Testament. Well, again, but Captain, it says 
it shall be at that day, says the Lord, that thou shalt call me Ishi. It's not talking about right now. It's talking about the day where we go into the wilderness. Do you think we've already that's already taken place? No, when it says, and it shall be in that day, that day can be any day because we're calling on him right now. Okay, so let me make sure I understand. So Hosea 2 and 14 is, therefore, behold, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness. Is that, has that taken place? No, we have not been put in the wilderness, no. Okay, that hasn't taken place. And I will give her her vineyards from thence and mm -hmm. the valley of a core for a door of hope. Has that taken place? No. Okay, and she shall sing there as in the days of her youth. As in the day and as in the day when she came up out of the land of Egypt. Has that taken place? No. And it shall be at that day. When it says that day, what day is it referring to? That day is now. <laughs> so wait a minute. I I'm not trying to I'm not trying to laugh, Salak, yet to be like patronizing. I'm not understanding. And I think I can speak for a few amount of people when it says how does it magically go from in the future? And then verse 16, conveniently, that day turns into now. A matter of fact. Let me just keep reading. Thou shalt call me Ishi and shall call me no more Baal. For I will take away the names of Baal out of her mouth. What does that mean? I will take away the names of Baal out of her mouth. The, mer the name of Baal is out of my mouth right now. Right, but, but who's the her right there? Israel. Right. Is the name of Baal out of Israel's mouth right now? As a nation? No. But okay. that's for people that believe in magic. So when I say people that believe in magic, people are waiting for everything that this is fulfilled when every nation me every israelite takes that name out but the reason why i said in that day is now as far as saying the lord thou shalt call me ishi is because we can do that today right now today the only reason we can call on the lord is because christ's blood remissed our sins from the old put us into the new testament and now we can call on him so even in Hebrews 9, you have brought up Hebrews 9. So I answered again your question to Hosea. So you brought up Hebrews 9. If I was to go into the next chapter, it gives you a difference between the old and the new. Okay. So in Hebrews 10, for example, in Hebrews 10, um, 28, because I mean, because the advantage you and I have is we kind of know the scripture. But if I need to read a couple of verses up, you're fine. Me yeah, you're, you're good. Yeah. It's so show. Hebrews, I'm just a guest. No, I wouldn't say that to everybody. I wouldn't make you see the last cat that was on the show. I wouldn't. Yeah, say don't, I don't, yeah, yeah, I got you. I got Scripture. you. Scripture. Yeah, so yeah. Hebrews 10 and 28, it says, he that despised Moses law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Would you say that that's the Old Testament or Old Covenant? What, Moses law? The verse, I'm going to read it again. He that despised Moses law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Would you, be, would you say that that's under the Old Testament or Old Covenant? Uh, yeah, I guess. Okay, so in verse 29, of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall ye be thought worthy who have trodden underfoot the Son of God and have counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and have done despite unto the spirit of grace? Is that different than Moses? Um, which part? The What you just read in verse 29? Yeah. Uh, what do you mean is it different than Moses? Is the blood of that covenant different than the blood of Moses' covenant? So that covenant is in reference to the new covenant. So now what we, where we it's would disagree reference. is where we would disagree is my understanding of what Hebrews 10 and 28 to 29 is. So if, no problem. And I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem with you doing it. I just want to mm -hmm. get on record. You saying that that is two different covenants there, right? When it says, and I've counted the blood of the covenant, that's the blood of Christ that he spilled so that we could enter into the new covenant eventually. Yes. Okay. So mm -hmm. I just want to, so yes, these are two different covenants. Yes. Okay, you, you said you have a different understanding. I'll let you give it. Yeah, I so I agree. Um, verse 28, he that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. No problem. So now what the question is, what does verse 29 mean? Is verse 29 saying that at the point in which the author of Hebrews wrote Hebrews 10 and 29 that they're in the new covenant? No. What Hebrews 10 and 29 is doing is speaking on people who take what Christ's blood did, which was give us grace, and then make it to where we can like make him the minister of sin. Nowhere does this say that we're in the new covenant. And furthermore, how we know this isn't saying we're in the new covenant is a couple of things. Uh, when you continue reading in Jeremiah verse 30 or chapter 32, uh, which continues on in Jeremiah 31 in Jeremiah 32, it says, I'll just get to the point in verse 40. It says, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them that they, I will not turn away from them to do them good 
but I will put my fear in their hearts that they shall not depart from me. What verse you reading? Jeremiah 32 and 40. Okay. So I'm answering your question in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 28. So how we know it's not saying that it's we're under the new covenant based on that is in the new covenant, according to Jeremiah 32, 